Hello, DevOps people. Welcome to Fullstack Live Cool Tools, where I introduce you to nifty open source utilities. Displaying the contents of a single file in the terminal or combining multiple files into one are among the most common tasks when you're using the shell. That's why the cat command has always been one of the most used commands since Unix was invented. In this episode, we'll take a closer look at cat as well as its more modern alternative, bat. The cat command is one of the oldest Unix commands. It already existed in Unix version 1, where it replaced the PR utility of its ancestor operating systems. Its purpose is to read the files, giving in its arguments in sequence, and to write their contents to the standard output by default to the screen. By the way, it's the use case with two or more files that gives cat its name. Cat has nothing to do with feline animals. The name refers to its concatenating effect when you give it multiple files as its input. Cat is a simple tool that doesn't offer many command line options. One of the few interesting extra features is that the GNU variant, commonly installed on Linux, can also display non-printing characters using the dash V and dash E options. Let's try the most simple use case first, printing the contents of a file to the screen. Here we have two files, a.txt and b.txt. With two names as arguments, we concatenate the files in the output. Using the shell's I.O. redirection features allows us to write the output to another file. We can also use the pipe mechanism to hand the output over to another command, for example a pager. Time to introduce some controversy. Using cat to output a single file simply for the purpose of piping its contents to another command is by many considered UUOC, a useless, useless use, use of cat. cat. The same effect can be achieved in a simpler manner by redirecting standard in, after all. As someone who regularly has to try and understand my own code years after I wrote it, I'd say that it's often better not to use the most writing efficient approach, but the most reading friendly one. First, let me demonstrate how quickly a multidirectional input output sequence can become confusing. So we'd like to filter some content, but read it from a file. And then we'd like to use sed to modify the results a little bit. And in the end, we want everything to end up in another file. Granted, that works. But I feel that the fact that the standard in redirection is pointing against my reading direction interrupts the flow. Now compare that with this nicely linear pipeline from left to right. We grab our input text, then we filter, then we edit, and in the end, we write everything out. So, which one is easier to understand for a tired DevOps person? And the topic of readability leads us nicely to a more modern implementation of cat named bat. Its GitHub page describes it as 
a cat clone with wings, or more seriously, a cat clone with syntax highlighting and Git integration. That makes reading files in the terminal fun. As long as its output goes to a suitable terminal, BAT will add line numbers and apply syntax highlighting determined from the file's first line or file name extension. If BAT can't determine the correct syntax on its own, you'll have to help out a bit. For example, Let's query an API. Here, I'll have to tell that that we are getting JSON. Isn't that neat? That will also automatically use pagination when a file has more lines than will fit on the screen. Its Git integration points out modifications with respect to the repository index in the sidebar. Let me modify one of our demo files. That also improves how non-printable characters are displayed. If you're worried that you're going to confuse bat and cat, or that you'll have to switch back to cat when you need to do I.O. redirects, don't be. Do make the switch to the winged newcomer. The command can detect when you use it in a non-interactive context, for example in a pipe. In that case, it will behave like its predecessor. Let me finish with a note to Debian and Ubuntu users. On these distributions, both the installation package and the shell command are named batcat. That's it for this episode of Full Stack Live Cool Tools. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like to support me in sharing my knowledge and in return learn even more about DevOps, get access to courses and have individual coaching sessions with me, join our community over on Obsitive.com. Until next time, take care.